Hi, I'm Ruben Miller and I'd like to welcome you once again to my series of tutorials on GIMP, how to use it. In today's episode, we're going to look at selections, what they are and why you actually make them. We're going to look at some of the most commonly used selection tools. We're also going to do more work on layers. We're going to examine some more of the tools in the toolbox. If you'd like copies of any images that I use in this tutorial, please email me and I'd be happy to send them to you. You'll be able to find my email at the end of uh, this video. So let's get started. When we look at an image like this, we can see things like potatoes and mushrooms and slices of carrots and so on. GIMP doesn't understand that at all. In fact, all GIMP sees is a series of pixels. Some are orange, some are grey, some are white, and so on. Now, if we want to affect just the colour in just certain parts of the image, we have to actually tell GIMP that that's a group of pixels that we want to change. As you saw in my previous uh, video, when you use your colours uh, menu, for example, and change the colour of uh, anything that's red, of course, everything that's read in the image changes. But what if you only want to change a small part or copy a small part of that image? Well, that's where selection tools come in. Now, we've got a range of selection tools, and they're right at the top of our toolbox. The first one is the rectangle select tool, and that's the most obvious. And you'll see that when you click on that, uh, you have a whole lot of options that you can choose. You can feather the edges, round the corners, and so on. To use the rectangle select tool, you simply bring your pointer into your workspace, click and start dragging, and it works in a very similar way to the crop tool in that you have a corner that you can click on and drag to expand or contract your selection. You also have a rectangle at the top, bottom and each side. Once you're happy with your selection, simply press enter to confirm it and you'll see what appears to be a row of marching ants running around that rectangle. Now there really are two rules of selection. The first rule is that if you've made a selection, you can only work within that selection. You can't work anywhere else in your image. The second rule is that you can only have one selection current at any time. Now, when I say you can only have one selection current at any time, that could be more than one area. So uh, it need not be adjacent pixels. It could be uh, different areas, but whatever you do in one part of your selection will also happen in the other parts of your selection. So let's see how that works in, in practice. At the moment I've got this rectangle selected. If I get my paintbrush tool and start painting inside the rectangle, you see it paints with black. But if I try and work outside the rectangle, nothing happens. In fact, by painting, stops at the edge of the rectangle. I'll just undo that by hitting Command Z on Mac or Control Z on PC. So that really clarifies what I was saying about when you have a selection, you can only work within the selection. The other rule is that you can only have one selection happening at any one time. So if I get my rectangle select tool once again and try and make a different selection, you'll see that I now create a new selection but the original selection disappears. I also said that you can have more than one part of a selection and if you look in your uh, rectangle select tool options you can see that we have a few buttons going along the top. The first one is to simply uh, make a new selection the second one is to add to the current selection. So if I click on that button and bring my pointer to a new area and click and drag, you'll notice the first selection doesn't um, disappear as it did before. 
If I now press return, it appears that I've got two selections, but in actual fact, it is just one selection, which is in multiple parts. To demonstrate how that works, I'll go into the filters menu and let's go down to edge detect and uh, we'll try neon to see what happens. Dialog box pops up and we'll just click OK. You can now see that both selected areas are affected equally. I'll just undo that by once again Command Z or Control Z on um, the PC. To get rid of your selections entirely, you simply go to the Select menu and go down to None. So we have a whole group of selection tools and we're going to use them to select various areas of this image and create a, copy those and create a composite image that looks something like that. First thing we have to do is create a brand new file. So let's go to the File menu and go down to New. And we're going to make a file that's not sized in pixels, but is sized in millimeters. And we're going to make one which is 200 by 200. So we'll just pop that over here and we'll close the finished piece. So the first thing we need to do is actually select this potato. Now we do have various selection tools. We've looked at the rectangle select, we've also got an elliptical select tool, a freehand select tool, uh, what's called the fuzzy select tool which makes selections based on colour. We've got the select by colour tool which also makes selections based on colour. The difference between these two is the fuzzy select tool will only select adjacent pixels to the one you clicked on. The uh, color select by color tool actually will select the similar colors anywhere in your image, whether they are adjacent or not. A few more tools we've got is the scissor select tool and the foreground select tool. And those are the tools we're going to be looking at today. So to select this potato, it's not exactly uh, circular or elliptical, so we're going to use the fuzzy select tool to select by colour. When you click on the fuzzy select tool, once again we have all these buttons along the top uh, to simply make a selection, to add to the selection, subtract from the selection, and intersect with the current selection. We've also got an anti-aliasing option what anti-aliasing simply means is that it tries to smooth those square pixels so that we don't have jagged edges. You can feather the edges. What feathering the edges actually does is softens the edges so things don't look cut and paste. Uh, we can select transparent areas. Sample merged means that we basically select through different layers. And then we've got our threshold. The threshold really dictates the number of colors on either side of the pixel that we click on. By default, the threshold is set to 15. Now that might sound a lot, 15 pixels either side of um, the pixel that we click on, but in actual fact it's quite tiny, bearing in mind that we've got something like 17 million colors in any image. 15 out of 17 million is not much at all. The threshold amount that you set really depends on what you're trying to select and guessing the right amount really comes with practice. Because we've got quite a few um, different colors in that potato, I'm actually going to bump uh, my threshold right up to about 60. Make sure that it's selected by composite. Bring your pointer onto the potato and simply give a click. You'll see that what appears to be a row of marching ants uh, surrounds the potato, but we also have gaps in the middle. So we have to add that to our selection. 
Now, one way of doing that is to simply click on the Add to Current Selection button. But by holding down the Shift key, we have exactly the same effect. In fact, you'll notice that if we hold down the Shift key, that button automatically gets selected anyway. So we can just bring our pointer to the areas that are currently deselected and carry on clicking and pull the entire potato selected. We can then go to the Edit menu and copy that and then go to our blank canvas and from the Edit menu we can paste. And that pops the potato right in the middle. Now if you look at your uh, Layers panel, you'll see that something fairly strange has happened. Instead of pasting it on the background, it's actually given us what's called a floating selection. Now a floating selection is not actually a layer. Um, it's a kind of temporary layer. If you click on the anchor, it actually fuses that onto the background. We'll undo that, Command or Control Z to undo that. Um, if we create a new layer by clicking on this button, uh, you'll see that instead of it simply floating or being pasted on the background, it gets pasted onto a brand new layer. When we're working with layers, it's always a very, very good idea to name the layer so you know exactly what you're working with. To re rename the layer, you simply double click on the existing name and type in the new name and then press enter. You'll also notice that it looks like there's a square selection around it. And in fact, it's not a selection. It's called the boundary, the layer boundary. If you don't like to see that there, which I can admit is quite confusing, you can go to the view menu and go down to show layer boundary and it hides the boundary. All the boundary is showing us is the extent of the object that's on that particular layer. So let's go back to our uh, ingredients page and we're going to deselect the potato by going to the select menu and going to none. The next thing we've got to do is to select our carrot. Now to zoom in we can get our zoom tool, bring our pointer onto the carrot and just click a couple of times. When you're doing that it's very easy to click a few times too many and find that the carrot is so huge you can't actually see what you're doing. You can zoom out by uh, simply holding down the command key on the PC, oh, on the Mac or the control key on the PC and uh, clicking, which will zoom it the other way. Or we have this little, um, looks like a Maltese cross on the bottom of the right hand corner, the bottom right hand corner. If you hold, click and hold down, you can actually navigate around with that. You can also change your zoom factor by clicking on this box over here and uh, at the moment we're looking at 800%. If we go down to 400% that gives us a more realistic um, zoom amount in which to work. To select this slice of carrot what we're going to do is use the ellipse select tool. It works in a very similar way to the rectangle select tool in that you click and drag and once again you have handles that allow you to move your marquee to the correct amount. So we'll just move it in like that. When you're happy, press enter and then we'll go to the edit menu and copy that, go to our finished page and this time instead of simply pasting, let's go to the edit menu and paste as and you'll see that we can create a new layer straight away by doing that. Now we can get our move tool, which is that guy over there, and simply move that into position. That gives us the left carrot. So let's rename that to left carrot. 
we need, now need a right carrot. There's actually no need to go back to our ingredients page because we've already got a slice of carrot in the clipboard. Once you copy something, whether it's in GIMP or any other program, that uh, object that you copy remains on the clipboard until you copy another object. So we can simply make sure that we um, have this selected and then go to the edit menu once again and paste as a new layer. We can rename that right carrot and then we can use our move tool to just move that into position. Back to our ingredients page and let's go to the select menu and none. We now want the pupil of the eye so once again we can click on the navigator and drag over to the pupil of the eye. And once again we're going to use our ellipse select tool by simply clicking and dragging. Small tip is if you're doing this kind of thing, it's always a good idea to make your um, marquee a little bit smaller than the whole object so that we don't actually get any of the background in. We can press return to confirm this. Now we'd really like to soften the edges a little. If I thought about this before I actually made the selection, I could click could have clicked on feather edge in the uh, tool options. But I didn't think of it at the time. But I can still feather the edges, or in other words, soften them by going to the select menu and going down to feather. It asks me how much I would like to feather it by. The amount of feather really depends on the image you're working on, the resolution and so on. Remember that the higher the resolution, the smaller each pixel is going to be. In this case, let's give it a feather of three pixels and click OK. We'll then go to the Edit menu and go down to Copy. And then we'll go to our Final and go to the Edit menu and paste as a new layer. And uh, the pupil appears. I think it's a tomato. And we can simply drag it into position. I'll just zoom in a little bit so that you can see what's happening. You might notice that where the carrots had a very sharp edge and looks like it's pasted on, the tomato has actually got a much softer edge. So in the real world, if you were copying a real person's eye, for example, this would look far more natural than the slice of carrot. Let's just rename that to left pupil. And this time we're going to do something slightly different. Instead of pasting as a new layer again, we're simply going to click on this duplicate layer button. Now nothing appears to happen in the image, but if you look in your layer panel, you can see that you now have a left pupil copy. Let's rename that to right pupil. And if we get our move tool, you'll see that it actually has duplicated this layer, but right on top of the layer it's duplicated. Going back to our um, ingredients page, we can go to the select menu and this time none. And we'll take a look at the entire thing by going down to 100%. And we can just scroll. Next thing we want to do is create an eyebrow, a set of eyebrows. When you're making selections, it's a very good idea to look at not just the range of pixels that you want to select, but what the background looks like. And we'll just zoom in 
a little bit here so we can see what's happening. And we can actually see that we've got the spring onion, which is got, which has multiple colors in it, but it's sitting on a background that's um, very monochromatic. It's just off-white. So we can actually use that to our advantage. The way we can do that is to get our rectangle select tool and draw a rectangle right over the gray area surrounding the spring onion and press return. Now you'll recall that the fuzzy select tool selects similar colors. Let's just bring that down to its default amount of about 15. And we saw that we could add to a selection, we can also subtract from a selection. We can simply uh, click on the um, subtract from the current selection button, bring a pointer to uh, an area of grey surrounding uh, the spring onion. So in other words, we are going to subtract that from the selection and give a click. And you'll see that that very neatly subtracts the grey area from that rectangle of uh, selected pixels, leaving just the spring onion. So we can then go to the Edit menu, go down to Copy or Control-C, Command-C, and then simply go to the Edit menu and paste as a new layer. And it then comes in or you can call it left brow and using our move tool move it into position. Once again we can copy that by simply clicking on the duplicate um, layer button and calling that right brow. Of course, it duplicates directly uh, on top of the original. So once again, we can simply get our move tool and move it. Now you'll notice that uh, it actually is the wrong way around. It needs to be flipped. And that's what uh, this tool is for. It's the flip tool. To flip it, you just simply click on it and it flips over. Uh, we can then move it into position. We now need to give this guy a mouth. So let's go to our original um, and we'll change our zoom factor to back to 100 so we can see uh, the whole thing. And we're really going to get the slice of lemon. So we'll just zoom in by clicking on the zoom tool and clicking a couple of times. And we're just simply going to use the ellipse select tool by clicking and dragging. Oops. I'll hit enter or return and then copy or control C. And we'll go to our finished product and once again edit paste as a new layer and we can move that into position like so and call it mouth. Once again we'll go back to our, our ingredients page and zoom out to 100% and go to the select menu and none and we are going to select the um, piece of mandarin to use as an ear. Now um, we could use a similar um, method of selecting that um, piece of mand mandarin as we uh, did with the uh, spring onion, but we're going to use a brand new tool and it's called the foreground select tool. It's that one over there. Um, 
this is a magical tool and it takes a little practice to understand how to use it. But basically what you do is you very roughly draw around the object that you want to select. Come back to your starting point which turns yellow and you'll see that everything except the area that you enclose now becomes blue and your pointer has now got a little circle in it. What it's asking you to do is sample all the colors that you actually want. So I'm just going to do a very rough swatch like that and you'll see that it tightens up that selection on the mandarin. Now by pressing return it finalizes that and you can see how beautifully that um, piece of mandarin has been selected. So let's uh, press command or control C and then go to our final product and go to the edit menu and paste as a new layer. Uh, we'll call this right ear and with our move tool we'll move it into position. Now you can see that that doesn't look too good at all because first of all it's floating above the face where we'd really rather have it behind the face and secondly it's probably too big. So let's start off by making it smaller and for that we'll use the scale tool which is that one, uh, sorry, that one over there. To scale it you simply click on it and you'll see a grid appear over the object on that layer. You'll also get this dialog box which allows you to change the width or the height but you'll see a little link next to those. If you click on this link when you change the width you'll also be changing the height. So we can now just click on one of those corner handles and drag down and when you're happy with the size click on scale and it scales down. I'd also like to rotate it somewhat, so to do that we can use our rotate tool, which is that one there, which works in a very similar way. You click on the object you want to rotate and then you can either move the slider over here or a much more intuitive way is to simply click on the object you're trying to rotate and putting it, uh, rotating it as much or as little as you want. We can then click on Rotate and that puts it in the right position. Now, what we'd also probably like to do is place it behind the head and that's where the um, Layers panel comes in. So at the moment we've got our right ear selected as a layer and we can click on this button a few times until we bring it right below the potato. Another way of doing it would simply be to drag it like that. So that's given us our one ear. We need another ear so we can of course duplicate it like that. And we'll call this left ear. And then get our move tool and click and drag. Now of course the um, it's facing the wrong way so we need to flip it which we can do with our flip tool and we probably need to rotate it a little bit more which we're going to use the rotate tool to do uh, by just clicking and dragging like that and then click on rotate and using our move tool we'll put it into position. We're now going to select the mushroom from our ingredients page, which we're going to use as a hat. So we'll go back to our ingredients page. Now you can see that the mushroom has got areas of yellow in it and it's sitting on a background of yellow. So any of our color based selection tools really won't work all that well. So this time we'll use a new tool, which is called the scissor select tool, which is that tool over there. Now the way the scissor select tool actually works is it finds areas of contrast. 
So we can bring our pointer to the edge of the mushroom and give a single click. We then bring it to another point on the edge of the mushroom and you'll notice that it draws this line really over the edge of the contrast. So we can just keep on going. Now sometimes it doesn't work terribly well, it needs a bit of help. So like in this case, we can click to make another anchor and just drag it out a little bit to help it along its way. So we'll just carry on clicking until we get right back to our starting point. And when we get back to our starting point, we can press enter and you'll see that it's done a really good job. In my case, I've missed out a tiny bit of mushroom over here. Now, there's an almost secret tool which you can use with any of the selection tools. This is called Quick Mask and it really is there to help you refine your selection, not so much to make it, but to refine it. It's very well hidden. In fact, it's that little button right in the bottom left-hand corner. So if we click on that little button, you'll see that all areas of the image except the areas that we've selected turns red. We can now use our paintbrush and eraser to fine-tune uh, our selection. So I'll get my paintbrush. Now you'll notice I'm painting with uh, the foreground color, which is supposed to be black. But when I paint on the mushroom, it actually paints with red. So in other words, what I've done here is I've deselected an area of the mushroom. To see how that works, I can click on the quick mask button again, and you'll see that it has now punched a hole in my selection. If I go back to quick mask, at this time get my eraser, I can erase away that red paint. And when I get out of Quick Mask, that hole that's been punched has gone. Go back into Quick Mask and we can see that I've got a small area here that I've missed. So using my eraser, I can just erase away that small area. And when I get out of Quick Mask, that has now been added to my selection. I'll do the same to that little edge there. Out of Quick Mask and I'll just erase away that edge. And then when I get out of Quick Mask, it has helped somewhat. Once again, and that's tightened it up very nicely. So let's go to the Edit menu and copy that, or Command, Control, C, and then go to our final. Now we really want that um, mushroom to be on top of his head. So if we went to the Edit menu and went to Paste as a new layer, the mushroom does come in, but when we move it, you'll see that it's actually hidden behind his head. To bring it to the top, we'll first of all rename this, we'll call it Hat, and then we'll click on that and drag it all the way up to the very top. And you'll see that it's now sitting on top of his head. We can move it more into position, but of course we don't want all the stalk. So what we can do is get our eraser and maybe grab a bigger brush and also find a hard edge brush. And we can now paint away part of the mushroom. If you want to, you can also rotate it so to give it a bit of a jaunty angle. Move it into position. And that makes him look much better. As a final step in this exercise, we're going to cut out the bow tie shaped slice of pasta from the ingredients page and create a bow tie for Mr. Veggie Man. 
So we'll go back to our ingredients page and take a look. We can see that the um, pasta itself is yellow and it's sitting on a kind of mottled yellow background. So mottled yellow pasta, mottled yellow background. One of the color-based selection tools is not going to work that well. So what we're going to use is the free select tool, which is that one. To use the free select tool, you can simply give clicks to draw straight lines, or you can click and drag to draw freehand shapes. And once you release the mouse and start clicking again, once again you're clicking, you dragging lines, straight lines. So just click and drag, or click until you get back to your starting point. And we can carry on clicking. I'm going to make sharp edges to this just for the sake of speed. It's very important when you're using this tool to remember where you started because it's absolutely essential that, as in this case, you go back to your starting point. You'll see when you hover your pointer over your starting point, it turns yellow. And when you give that final click, it actually um, confirms your selection. So, Command, Control, C to copy. And let's go back to our final. And from the Edit menu, paste as uh, a new layer. And we'll just call that tie and simply move it into position. Now just as a final finishing touch we'll put a shadow on the tie just to make it pop out and to do that we'll go to the filters menu and uh, we'll go to light and shadow and drop shadow a dialog box will appear and we'll give it uh, a drop shadow of about 8, or uh, offsets of about 8. We'll leave the blur at 15 and just drop the uh, opacity to about 40 and then click OK. And voila, we there have a drop shadow. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you and I'd like to thank you for watching. If you'd like copies of uh, the ingredients file, please don't hesitate to contact me and I'd be happy to send you a copy, totally free of charge, of course. So um, my uh, email address um, will be along shortly. So thank you once again.